Hi, and welcome to Getting Naughty with Adam. I'm your host, Adam. Don't get any funny ideas, it's just a play on words. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a, a few knots that are essential for working in the dive community. I'm here at Coconut Tree Divers on Roatan, Honduras, and what I'm going to be showing you is what we call Marlin Spike Seamanship. Now, Marlin Spike Seamanship is built on the principles that when a knot is tied in a line, when the line is put under continuous or dynamic loading, the knot can readily be untied with just your hands. Now what I have here is called a granny knot, and we all know the granny knot, and it's a total piece of shit. Because when you put any sort of loading on it, it binds up so tight that you end up having to cut it out. So today, I'm going to show you four essential knots that we use daily here, one of which is the most basic, the half hitch. We'll move on to our clove hitch, our cleat hitch, and lastly for today, the bowling. So, sit back and enjoy the show. There's a little bit of terminology we should go over before we get started. First of all, what I have here in my hand is called a rope. Now a rope becomes a line when it is given a specific job. So throughout this, these uh, series, I'm going to be referring to this rope as a line. And a line has more or less three parts. It has two bitter ends and a standing part. What we will be working with and what you'll be working with whenever using these knots is a standing part and one bitter end. Now as we're working, we're, we will typically have one bitter end and our standing part. If I take my bitter end and pass it on top of the standing part, this is what is called an overhand loop. If I take my bitter end and pass it under the standing part, that's called an underhand loop. When this loop is done around an object, it's called a turn. And now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. All right, well, let's start off with one of the simplest knots, and it's called a half hitch. So if I take my line and make an underhand turn around an object and pass my bitter end down through the hole, this is what is called a half hitch. Now a half hitch alone is not very sturdy, so we always put two in. So you, what you need to do is continue in the same direction, passing, over, or passing under your standing part, over the top, and back down through the same hole, creating what is called two half hitches. Alright, now I did say this uh, not as simple, but it's also very simple to mess up. Now, if we go back and we start over again, we start with our underhand turn, we take our bitter end, pass it down through the hole, and cinch it. A common mistake is to then, instead of passing in the same direction and underneath your standing part, initially, you pass over and then come up through the hole. And what we tie here is called a lark's head. This lark's head is not correct and does not bind as, easy, as, as uh, tightly. So we want to make sure that we continue the flow of the knot passing the same direction around our standing part back down through and that way this line is separated between our two half hitches and binds properly. Alright, the next knot I'm going to show you is called a clove hitch. We use it all the time down here and it, we use it to secure our boat to a dock pylon when a cleat may not be available. So what we're going to do is start with our bitter end again. We will pass around our pylon with an underhand turn. We will then cross on top of our standing part making a second turn and this time passing underneath and cinching the knot tight. This is called a clove hitch. All right, now that we have our clove hitch tied, we may want to add a couple of half hitches for stability. And what we're going to do is just take our bitter end and continue in the same direction around our pylon. We'll come back to our standing part, passing underneath, and down through our hole to cinch our first half hitch. We're then going to take our bitter end again, passing under the standing part, and back down through the hole to complete our second half hitch. This is a clove hitch with two half hitches. Alright, sometimes when pulling up to a dock, you might not have your bitter end in hand and you still need to tie a clove hitch on your dock pylon. 
So what we can do is pretend that one hand is the better end. So this here will be my theoretical better end, and I'm going to pass one underhand loop under my standing part. I'm going to pass another underhand loop under my standing part, place my second loop on top of the first, and lay both of them on top of the pylon. And you've got yourself a clove hitch every time. And you just got yourself a raise. All right, now what I'm going to show you is called a cleat hitch. It's very simple, but notoriously screwed up by uh, rookie sailors. And this one will really piss your boss off if you do it wrong. So I'm going to show you how to do it right. What we have here is a cleat, and we have two horns. We're going to take our line, pass it around both horns to make one full turn. We're then going to start a figure eight pattern around the horns until we've completed one full figure eight. Now this is the tricky part. When we come down, we need to continue our symmetry, but we want to put a, put a half hitch on this line. So we're going to pass under here, back under ourself, and pull tight. And you can see, when tied correctly, the lines lay nicely together. If this is hitched incorrectly, the knot doesn't really look as nice and will not perform in the same way. So if we back this back out, cross underneath, that's your cleat hitch. Now what I'm going to show you is called the bowlin. It's a maritime favorite, and oftentimes incorrectly pronounced, the bowlin. Do me a favor and don't, don't do that. And don't lose me here, because what I'm going to do is start us with an overhand turn. We've been doing underhand turns this whole time, but now we're going to do an overhand turn. Okay? I've got my bitter end passing on top of my standing part. The next step to this knot is to pass your bitter end up through your overhand turn. You're then going to pass it underneath your standing part and back down through your overhand turn. And when cinched together is a bowling. Now a bowling can also easily be tied by passing the opposite direction around your standing part. It still works just as effective, but it's called a left hand bowling because the the bitter end passes on the outside of the loop instead of on the inside. This is a left hand bowling. And when backed out and sent around the standing part in the other direction and back down through your overhand loop and cinched is the bowling. Alright, well that concludes episode one of Getting Naughty with Adam. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, just rewind it and watch it again. I'm here at Coconut Tree Divers on Roatan, Honduras. And tune in next time as I show you guys how to tie bends, attaching two bitter ends together. See you next time.